From the MidwestSports.net studio, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Let's get things going today with Division II football, and we will start with our Division II football rankings. The MidwestSports.net rankings have Washita, the lone team in this footprint, still undefeated, 8-0 and now. The Tigers defeated Oklahoma Baptist last weekend, 58-21. Well, it was a Thursday night game this week. And Washita defeated Southern Nazarene 41 nothing. The Tigers pitching a shutout. This is the top defense in NCAA Division II, now giving up just 9.5 points per game. A uh, great job by Washita. They continue to move on through the Great American Conference. To the MIAA, our number two team is Northwest Missouri, as there were three teams in our top five that suffered losses last week. Northwest Missouri, not one of those, moving up from number three to number two as the Bearcats defeated Nebraska Kearney 27-13 today at Lindenwood. Number three, Southern Arkansas fell from the top spot, shut out on the road in Durant. Southeastern 21-0 victors over Southern Arkansas and giving the Mule Riders their first loss of the season. Now Southern Arkansas 6-1, and, and they are at home today. It's homecoming, and they're taking on East Central. Our number four team is Fort Hayes State, as Fort Hayes State defeated Pittsburgh State last week. Pitt State dropping uh, to number five, Fort Hayes State, with that 50-21 to 21 win over the Gorillas. Gorillas now have lost two in a row. Fort Hayes State, the Tigers on the road at rival Nebraska Kearney today. We mentioned Pitt State falling from number four to number five. The Gorillas, with that loss, uh, they have lost now two straight. As we mentioned, they are taking on Central Missouri today, a big matchup there in Pittsburgh. Number six, Harding. Defeated Southwestern Oklahoma last week, 50 to 20, 50 to 10. Excuse me. The five and two on the season are the Bisons now, and the Harding Bisons hosting Northwestern Oklahoma today. Number seven, Southeastern, with the win over Southern Arkansas, moves up a spot, five and two now on the year. The Savage Storm has a 21 nothing win. Big victory there in Durant, and and really one of the first ones against Southern Arkansas in recent uh, in recent years hosting, or excuse me, on the road now at Henderson State today, and that is another team that the Savage Storm has struggled with in recent years. Number eight, Missouri S&T, five and two on the year. The Miners defeated William Jewell last week, 59-21, and on the road today at Quincy. It's number nine, Central Oklahoma, with the win over Missouri Western last week, 17-16. The Broncos are hosting Washburn today. And our number 10 team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Emporia State at 4-3, and three, moving into the rankings this week as the Hornets defeated Central Missouri last week, 41-23, hosting Missouri Western today. Well, let's look through our Division three schedule now. Teams in the MidwestSports.net region, Luther at Nebraska Wesleyan today. And Luther, the top rushing team in the American Rivers Conference, 246.3 yards per game. Well, going against a pretty quality rushing game in Nebraska Wesleyan as well. Shaka Taylor needs just 39 rushing yards to become the all-time leader at Nebraska Wesleyan. And that game in Lincoln today. It's Central at Wartburg today. The Dutch 7-0 now. And the top two scoring teams in the conference are going against each other today in this matchup, scoring a combined 83 points per game. It's Cornell at Monmouth today. Dubuque at Buena Vista. The Beavers have given up fourth quarter leads in each of the last two games, looking for their first American Rivers win this season. Eric Pacheco has 11 receiving touchdowns for Buena Vista as well. Is poised to cross the 1,000-yard mark in receiving yards today. We'll see if that comes about. Lake Forest at Grinnell, and Grinnell trying to shut down Lake Forest's passing game. The Pioneers give up only 124 passing yards per contest. Now that is going on today. Loris at Simpson today. It's Minnesota Morris at Westminster today. And also on the docket in Division Three, Illinois Wesleyan at Washington. Washington, the Bears had the big win last week over number 12, Wheaton, in the CCIW. It's now uh, going to be hosting a, another big matchup in conference today against Illinois Wesleyan. Now, Washington last week, uh, led by, of course, quarterback Johnny Davidson. He's also the punter. Had a quality day punting last week and uh, garnered special teams player of the week in the conference. We got to hear what he had to say about the victory. 
you know, offensively, you know, everything's kind of clicking for us a little bit. Um, obviously, we're trying to improve every single week, but the offensive line's doing a great job, you know, up front, keep me from getting touched or keeping the running back from getting touched. So we're able to go out there and make plays, get the ball out quick, um, everything like that. Receivers are, you know, making all the catches. So I think, you know, each week we're just trying to improve as much as we can. You know, I had a few weeks off uh, just due to some injuries, but uh, the punt coverage team is, I, you know, I believe is one of the best in the nation. So we've got our gunners running down there, making the plays uh, when the ball gets down there. Kyle's doing an unbelievable job snapping, you know, puts it in the right location. Um, so I just kind of punt the ball down there, and I leave it up to them to, you know, cover it. And they've been doing a great job, and they're the reason, you know, we've been so successful in punt this year. Got another big one on Saturday. What do you expect uh, from Illinois Wesleyan? Yeah, they're a very good program. Uh, you know, historically, they're one of the best, you know, in the country. So uh, we're expecting, you know, to be, a, you know, a dogfight out there. So we're going to do, you know, as best as we can to uh, go out there and compete like we did against Wheaton and the other teams we played this season. So uh, hopefully we can come out on top again, but this could be a, you know, very tough game. Special thanks to Chris Mitchell and the Wash U Sports Information Department for that video. Well, we move from Division Three right on into Division One today. Games across the MidwestSports.net region in Division One football. Well, last night it was Arkansas State with the victory over Georgia State, 51 to 35. Justin Hansen for the Red Wolves becomes the now now becomes the all-time leader in touchdown passes. He crossed that mark with his 68th touchdown pass last night. Got two more now. He has 70. Going on today, it is Tulsa at Arkansas, teams in need of a win. The Golden Hurricane, 1-5 on the year. The Razorbacks, 1-6. Northwestern State at Central Arkansas today. It is Oklahoma at Texas Christian, and OU with a 14-7 lead right now in the second quarter over TCU. Drake is at Dayton today. Maryland on the road at Iowa, and Iowa giving up just 81.5 rushing yards per game. That is third in Division One in the FBS and Maryland, 245 rushing yards per contest. That is third in the Big Ten. So one of those games where you think something has to give. South Dakota State on the road today at Northern Iowa. It's Kansas at Texas Tech in Big 12 play. Memphis out of conference today in Missouri. And Jacksonville State on the road today at Southeast Missouri State. Western Illinois taking on Missouri State today. Minnesota at Nebraska Huskers trying to pick up the win. We move over to volleyball right now. Our Division II rankings here in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings, and these are some of the best teams in the country regardless of the region. Washburn, our number one team at 24-1, and one, the Ichabods, uh, dropping a contest for the first time this season. Nebraska Kearney, 26-1, and one, they're our number two team. It is Drury in at number three, 20-4, and, four, and Drury, having a fantastic weekend this past weekend at the Midwest Region Volleyball Crossover 3-0 and during that tournament, the nation's largest volleyball tournament. Uh, just a fantastic event there in Indianapolis. Drury at 20-4 and on the season. Rockhurst went 2-1, and by the way, in the Midwest Region Volleyball Crossover. Rockhurst 22-4 and on the season. Central Oklahoma, our number five team at 23-4. and Central Missouri at number six at 19-6. and Southwestern in at number seven, 17-5 and on the year. It's Harding at 18-7, and our number eight team. Number nine, Northwest Missouri at 19-5. and And number 10, Henderson State at 22-4. and well, We mentioned Drury having a fantastic weekend this past weekend. Coach Jennifer Bonner talked about what it meant to play well during the Midwest Region Volleyball Crossover. Our tournament is um, it's a big deal every year because it is playing regional ranked teams. It is helping you out with postseason um, rankings and it's high level competition. You know, our goal is to be in the top half of our conference so that we can play the top half of the other conferences that are coming into it. So um, we went in there knowing it was going to be tough matches. We we knew we were going to be playing two teams that were first in their conference also um, in Hillsdale and Ferris. Um, but we also felt like we were ready for it. You know, um, I think that we've played some tough matches early on. It gave us some experience and gave us kind of some know-how in terms of how to push through some of those tougher sets. And so we just went in there with that mindset of this is going to be challenging, it's going to be tough, but we're going to work our hardest and we're going to come out with some wins. 
uh, to get Ferris a second time. I mean, yeah. the second time around, you knew it was going to be harder, absolutely. but you got it. Absolutely, and it was harder. You're absolutely right. Um, they were a better team. I think they had made adjustments to what they saw playing us the first time. We also made some adjustments to how we um, were able to win the first time with them. Um, and it was a good competitive match. It was one of those um, moments that you work for every day in the gym so that you can have those kind of matches. Playing for two, two and a half hours in front of a huge hmm. crowd of people, two first place teams. Um, it was a huge day. It was a huge day for us and I was really proud to see the girls continue to compete and fight and come out with a win. Special thanks to Ed Beach and the Drury Sports Information Department for bringing us that video with Coach Bonner again. Drury 3-0 and and positioning itself are the Panthers now to have a, a great run to end this season looking toward the postseason as well. Let's move back to football now. Our NAIA football records or rankings in the MidwestSports.net region and we have Morningside in the number one spot. Morningside's been there pretty much all season long. Defeated Doan last week 69-7 to and taking on Northwestern today. And this is actually, this is the NAI game of the week. Northwestern, our number two team, number three in the country in the NAI overall coaches ranking. We have them at one and two here in the Midwest region, and that is a huge contest today. Northwestern idle last week, 6-0, and both teams undefeated. Someone's going to pick up a loss today, and someone will move that much closer to a GPAC championship with a win today. Now that day, game taking place in Orange City. Evangel, our number three team, 8-0 and on the year, defeating Central Methodist last week, 21-14, and hosting Mid-America Nazarene today. Our number four team, Kansas Wesley and the Coyotes, 6-0, and defeated Tabor last week, 41-12, to and they're on the road today at McPherson. Number five, Langston at 5-1 and on the year. The Lions defeated Arizona Christian, 38-17. Really a big win for Langston because Arizona Christian has come into what was then the Central States Football League and now the first year in the Sooner Athletic Conference and a tough opponent, and Langston coming away with a win there, really putting itself in the driver's seat in the Sooner Athletic Conference. It's number six, Benedictine, last week defeating Graceland 84-12. to 84 to 12 a statement game there on the road today at Culver Stockton. Number seven, Avila. Well, a big matchup today as Avila hosts Ottawa, Avila defeated Friends last week, 31-21, coming off a bye week and a loss in its previous contest. The Eagles uh, lost a tough one against Southwestern and getting things righted at least for a week. We'll see what happens today. Again, taking on Ottawa. Ottawa, our number eight team, 6-1 and one on the year, and defeated McPherson last week, 52-24. It's Grandview in at number nine, and the Vikings, 5-1, and one, defeated Peru State last week, I get to watch that game on ESPN3, another one of those games. There are a few of those on the ESPN docket today, some nationally televised games. Peru State, uh, as Grandview defeated Peru State, 45-28, taking on Graceland today. Southwestern, the Mound Builders in at number 10, idle last week and hosting Bethel today. Well, we move to, well, I guess uh, all the way around, talk about movement. That really is what is going on, and it continues at the Division II level as it was announced this week that Rogers State in Claremore, Oklahoma, will be moving into the MIAA in the 2019-2020 season. Now, conference realignment is nothing new. If you followed this on the Division I level, it really has been uh, something of a, a big deal on the Division II level, at least within the last decade. We've seen a lot of movement. Rogers State will become the 14th team in the MIAA, following Newman into the conference. Now, Roger State and Newman were both in the Heartland Conference and compete in the Heartland Conference this season. The Heartland Conference is uh, going to be absorbed into the Lone Star Conference in the 2019-2020 season as well. And so Roger State was going to be a part of that move. Now we'll be moving into the MIAA. Now there were two spots that were empty in the MIAA as Southwest Baptist, it was announced a few months back, will be transitioning to the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Well, Lindenwood, it was announced about a week and a half or so ago, the Lions would also be moving to the Great Lakes Valley Conference. So leaving a little bit of a void there, that was filled by the MIAA with Newman and now Roger State. And if you are a follower of the MIAA, you might think, why these two teams? This has been a football conference for so many years. That rule was relaxed this past summer, and so now athletic departments don't have to have 
an active football team to be a part of the MIAA. So again, now, Rogers State moving in, Newman moving in in 2019-2020, allowing for 12 football teams, 14 teams overall in the MIAA. The Great Lakes Valley Conference now moving to 16 teams with the inclusion of Southwest Baptist and Lindenwood. And Southwest Baptist was playing football with the GA, GLVC anyway. So 14 in the MIAA, 16 in the Great Lakes Valley, and 20 or 30 or 40 or however many that the Lone Star Conference is going to have. Uh, there are a lot of teams that will be a part of the Lone Star Conference in 2019-2020. Well, going back to volleyball, a big win this past week for Josh Collins, the head coach of the Southwestern Lady Dogs, as his team went to Southeastern and pulled off the sweep there. Southwestern 10-2 and in the GAC right now, and Josh Collins picks up his 100th victory as the coach of the Southwestern Lady Dogs. We got to hear from him in Durant. For Midwest Sports Saturday, we're speaking now with Josh Collins, the winning coach tonight as Southwestern comes away with a sweep over Southeastern here in Durant 3-0. Coach, talk about tonight's match. Uh, well, Southeastern played uh, really, really well. They served extremely tough. Um, Bree had a great game plan for them. I thought that they uh, took away some things that we've been successful on, and and uh, it was a much closer match than I would, wanted it to be, but I wouldn't expect anything less with uh, this program and kind of what she's done here. So, uh, But very proud of the victory, very excited that our girls found a way to, to come out on top. And that's exactly what they did. There were some rough spots along the way, but they did find a way, and they come away with victories in three sets. That's right. Um, I thought we were resilient and adapted and, and finally found some things that were going to be successful for us, and we kind of keyed on those. And, uh, again, just very proud of the, the way that they fought. You moved to 10-2 and two now in the Great American Conference, and you secured a spot in the postseason conference tournament. Four matches left here in the regular season. Talk about the home stretch. Uh, we're just going to take it one, one game at a time. So all I know is we play OBU, uh, uh, Oklahoma Baptist, on Saturday, and that's all we're worried about. We're not worried about anything else. We're not worried about uh, standings or conference record. or We're just worried about Oklahoma Baptist and, and coming out and taking that point by point uh, until we get a victory. Well, now you talk about one match at a time, but we do mean, need to mention one match in particular, and that is tonight, as this is win number 100 for Coach Josh Collins here at Southwestern. It's a milestone victory. I mean, that has to mean something. Um, it, it does. Uh, you know, m more I think about all of the players that helped us to get to that point, and uh, uh, Coach Bo and, and what he did to, to kind of get me to this point. And so um, I, I get it that it's it's Coach Collins' 100th win, but there's so many more people that um, had uh, even more sweat, blood, and tears than I had uh, put into this thing. So, um, yeah, it may be on my, it may be after my last name, but, um, you know, it's, it's a win for Swasu, and uh, that's a place that I love and care about. And, uh, again, a lot of people that I really love and care about uh, got us to this point. All right, a win for Swasu, a win for Coach Collins, and another victory tonight for the Lady Dogs. For Midwest Sports Saturday, I'm Joey McWilliams. A privilege to get to visit with Southwestern coach Josh Collins after his 100th victory. Special thanks to Sports Information Director Doug Self and the Southwestern Sports Information Department for that video and, and getting things set up there. We're going to wrap things up on this edition of Midwest Sports Saturday and talk about more football because we are right here in the middle of October and it's a great thing to talk about in the fall. Washita, we mentioned our number one team in Division II. Let's break down the Division II football schedule for you for the day. As Washita defeated Southern Nazarene, that was a Thursday night game. Chris Oliver, now the all-time leader in rushing yards in the Great American Conference, picked up 151 of them on Thursday night, has 699 for the season and 3,435 for his career, the all-time leader in the GAC. Washita, meanwhile, has pitched shutouts twice now during the season, five games keeping opponents to single digits in scores and is giving up just 9.5 points per game, and that is good enough for number one in the NCAA Division II. Right now, Washita 8-0. Northwest Missouri at Lindenwood today. Bearcats 4-0 all-time versus Lindenwood. Northwest gave up two rushing scores against Nebraska Kearney last week, snapping a streak of 19 straight games in which they had not allowed a rushing touchdown. Northwestern is uh, giving up just 
57% in the red zone this year. That is third in Division II as well, not allowing opponents to score once they cross that 20-yard line. Number three, Southern Arkansas hosting East Central today. It is homecoming in Magnolia, a 15-game home winning streak for the Mule Riders, which began on homecoming back in 2015. East Central scoring just 15.7 points per game and, and putting up just 229.7 yards of total offense. Struggling a bit this year. Tough row to hoe today in Magnolia as the Tigers are taking on the Mule Riders. It's our, our number four team, Fort Hayes State, on the road today at Nebraska Kearney. A rivalry game in which Kearney leads the all-time series 34-29-1. and one. Ah, but Fort Hayes State has won six straight since Nebraska Kearney joined the MIAA back in 2012. And by the way, for the Tigers, Jacob Mazzara, we've talked about him since the start of the season, and for good reason. The quarterback became the career leader at Fort Hayes State in passing yards, passing touchdowns, as he now has 7,083 passing yards and 56 touchdowns in his career at Hayes. That game at Nebraska Kearney today. It's our number five team, Pitt State, hosting Central Missouri today. Uh, Pitt State owning a solid 41-11-2 lead in the series all time. It's homecoming in Pittsburgh, and both of these teams coming off back-to-back -back losses. Pretty big deal for the Gorillas as well. They had 11 consecutive wins uh, coming into the contest a couple of weeks ago against Northwest Missouri. Pitt State having fallen the last two weeks. Central Missouri, 528 yards of total offense per game. That is good enough for the number four spot in Division II right now. Big contest there in the MIAA in Pitt State today. Harding at home today, hosting Northwestern Oklahoma. The Bisons, 330.7 rushing yards per game. That is second in Division II. Of course, you expect that with that option offense that the Harding Bisons run. A big game for Harding today at home. Southeastern on the road, taking on a Henderson State team today in Arkadelphia that it has not beaten in eight previous contests. That's right. Southeastern has not gotten a victory against Henderson State since joining the Great American Conference since its inception back in 2011-2012. However, these are teams that are both on a roll right now. The Storm having won four straight contests. Henderson State has won three straight and Southeastern's Kenneth Burks averaging 86 yards per game on the ground, 10 scoring touchdowns, and 8.6 points per contest. Missouri S&T, our number eight team on the road today at Quincy. The Miners' Deshaun Jones had his 12th 100-yard rushing game of his career last week with the win over William Jewell. It's our number nine team, Central Oklahoma, hosting Washburn today, both teams entering on a four-game win streak, and I guess the numbers for the day there in Edmond, four and three. Four and three are the Broncos. Four and three are the Ichabods, and the Broncos have a four to three lead in the all-time series since joining the MIAA. By the way, Broncos Clay McKenzie now with 2,988 career rushing yards as a Bronco poised to cross that 3,000-yard plateau today. Emporia State, our number 10 team, hosting Missouri Western today. Emporia State, well, it's homecoming in Emporia, and they've won five, great, five straight games in the series. Have the Hornets, uh, ESU's Landon Nault, and had his third consecutive or third 100-yard rushing game of the year with a 41-23 win over Central Missouri last week. Northeastern State at Missouri Southern. This is a game in which something has to give, folks. 0-7 versus 0-7. Riverhawks on the road at the Lions today in Joplin. It's Oklahoma Baptist at Arkansas Monticello today. Southwestern on Oklahoma on the road at Arkansas Tech. Upper Iowa on the road at St. Cloud State today. Lincoln is at William Jewell. Truman State taking on Southwest Baptist today. Now this is a matchup of teams that are going to have seen each other for the third time in 12 months because of a scheduling issue last year and an open date. The two teams played each other twice and split both games taking place in Kirksville. This one's going to be in Bolivar. By the way, Truman State having won four straight games after having lost its first three. So the Bulldogs on the road today taking on the Bearcats in Bolivar. It's Dixie State at Chadron State today. The Eagles had a three-game winning streak snapped last week in a high-scoring contest against always tough Adam State 
65-62. Chatterton State goes down, hosting Dixie State today in a very tough matchup as well. And Wayne State's on the road at Minot State today in Division Two. And NAI, the football schedule in our MidwestSports.net regional footprint, looks like this. The game of the week in the NAI is our game of the week as well, and we've been talking about this all week long. Number one, Morningside versus our number two team, Northwestern. Morningside, 56, 59.6 points per game, 16-10, and 10, the all-time record over Northwestern. Trent Solzma just continues to light it up, passing for 417 yards per contest. That's definitely number one in the NAI. Meanwhile, the Red Raiders are led by Jacob Calagonis, who is – rushing as well, doing what he does on the ground, where Solzman has been able to do it through the air. Caligonis does it on the ground. 731 rushing yards this season on his way to the 1,000-yard mark. He has 11 touchdowns to Northwestern, 1-9 and nine against Morningside in the last 10 meetings, getting a win back in 2013. This one is at home today. A very, very big matchup, not only for the GPAC, but also for all of the NAI. The number three team in our MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Evangel. The Crusaders are 8-0 and and snapped a 14-game losing streak to Mid-America, Mid-America Nazarene last week with a 31-29 victory, and that was at the Pioneers' homecoming. It's homecoming today in Springfield. And uh, so, with uh, excuse me, I said last week, last season. So they got that victory over Mid-America Nazarene last season. This year, Mid-America Nazarene trying to right the ship. It's homecoming today in Springfield, and we'll see if Evangel can make it a two-game winning streak against the Pioneers today. As uh, Evangel, 30 and a half sacks, that's good enough for number two in the NAI. The defense doing well there in Springfield. Our number four team is Kansas Wesleyan. Coyotes at McPherson today. Kansas Wesleyan defeated Tabor last week 41-12. to 41 points on the board. You might think, well, that's pretty good. That was the lowest point total all year long for the Coyotes as uh, Trenton Poe Evans picked up his 32nd career touchdown reception in last week's win, and that is a school record at Kansas Wesleyan. Number five, Langston. It's homecoming in Langston today, and the, the Langston Lions – are taking on the Lion Scots today. This is a Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. Jalen Lowe for Langston, 354.7 yards of total offense per game. That's second in the NAI. It's number six, Benedictine at Culver Stockton today. Again, we said Benedictine scoring 84 points last week. That game is underway right now in Canton, and BC holding the opponents to just 85 rushing yards per game. Just don't move the ball against the Ravens on the ground very well this year. Big matchup today. It is the first meeting between these two schools. Our number seven team, Avila, hosting our number 18, Ottawa. And the Eagles uh, hosting the Braves today. Avila's Jacob Jordan stepped in last week for the injured John Jacobs the third, and led the Eagles to the win over friends. Theo Berry, by the way, for Avila, set a program record for single season receiving. He now has 861 yards. He is on his way to crossing that 1,000-yard plateau. And Ryan Holmes for the Eagles last week had three, not one, not two, but three interceptions against friends last week. For Ottawa, meanwhile, they continue to be led by Darian Daniels, 102 receiving yards last week. He topped 100 yards of receiving for each of the last four games, and that's a big matchup today in Kansas City. Our number nine team is Grandview, the Vikings, led by running back Jerry Lowe, who has 732 rushing yards this year. No yards receiving. So you know what you're going to get when Lowe gets the ball. I mean, there's no question about it. He's going to keep it on the ground. No receptions, no receiving yards this year still. Tearing it up on the ground. And that's even that much more impressive if you know what's coming and you still can't stop it. Top the 100-yard mark in rushing for the last four games has Jerry Lowe. Grandview hosting Graceland today. Our number 10 team is Southwestern. The Mound Builders hosting Bethel today. It's homecoming. And the uh, 
Uh, Mountain Builders led by Keyshawn Wyatt, who has 137.4 yards of rushing per game, third in the NAIA. Well, the Bethel Wildcats run the ball as well as they put up 305 rushing yards as a team. That's second in the NAI, so lots of ground game going on today. Big game today in Doan, Briar Cliff. As the Chargers are hoping to get win number six for the season. Briar Cliff picking up the fifth victory last week, 5-2 and two now on the year. They were 5-6 and six in 2006. This will be the first time... If they can pick up that sixth win, would be the first time in program history since it started back in 2003. Also a big turnaround for Briarcliff as the Chargers were 0-11 last year, so 5-2 and two right now. Keith and Drury became the all-time rushing leader at Dort. Dort, home today, hosting Jamestown as Drury now with 2,250 yards on the year, or excuse me, on his career for the defenders. Peru State on the road today at William Penn. It's presentation at Waldorf today, and at Waldorf it is Military and First Responders Day in Forest City. The Warriors are three and four overall, two and one at home. I always like to promote those those games and those days when it's military appreciation day. St. Xavier on the road today at St. Ambrose. Arizona Christian at Oklahoma Panhandle as the Aggies able to hold on for the win last year in Phoenix against Arizona Christian and a big contest today in the Sooner Athletic Conference uh, that in Goodwill. Missouri Baptist at St. Francis of Indiana today. It's Missouri Valley at Central Methodist today. That is a 2.30 kickoff time and that game will be nationally televised as well on ESPN 3. The Eagles 3-0 at home coming in. It's Hastings at Concordia, Military Appreciation Day today at Bulldog Stadium in Seward. And both teams coming off losses last week, someone trying to right the ship today. Again, uh, we give the utmost props and honor to our military. Thankful for all that the folks who are serving us in this great country are doing. Again, Military Appreciation Day, Appreciation Day in Seward today. Bethel at St. Mary today and Sterling at Tabor. Sterling, the preseason favorite in the KCAC, just 3-4 and four on the year. That game is also nationally televised today, set to kick off at just a little bit after 2 on ESPN3. Well, I want to say thanks to all of you for watching today as we're in studio today. A couple of weeks from now, we will be uh, back out on the road for the next two weeks uh, from that point. I'm not sure exactly where we'll be broadcasting from next week, but in two weeks we'll be on the road. Three weeks we will be in Hot Springs, Arkansas as well. So that one should be a good day. We appreciate you watching each and every week. Now remember, this is on Facebook Live right now, but it's also going to be on our YouTube channel. Search Midwest Sports Net and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and watch not only Midwest Sports Saturday, but lots of other things that uh, lots of other things that we're able to provide for you on our family here, MidwestSports.net family. That includes Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, all of those things. So special thanks to Doug Sell from Southwestern, to Chris Mitchell from Washington, and to Ed Beach from Drury for helping us with video today. And again, thank you to you for watching. Thanks to my family for allowing me to get to bring this to you each and every week. We've enjoyed this edition of Midwest Sports Saturday. Again, thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a great Saturday and a great week.